Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in to Rare Company TV. My name is Raven Fields with Hopeful Horizons and you are watching a review of Audrey and Daisy. Now, what's so significant about this story with Audrey Pot and Daisy Coleman is the fact that both of these young women were sexually assaulted back in 2012 while they were intoxicated and unconscious. Um, they both had pictures and videos taken of them passed around the school, which resulted in them being bullied, teased, getting all sorts of threats, so much so to the point that Audrey Pot could not take it anymore. One day she called her mother to come pick her up from school and while she was in her room for hours, when her mom finally went to check on her, she found her dead because she had committed suicide. In Daisy Coleman's case, her mother pressed charges on her abusers and because he was a football star and because of his grandfather's influential state representative, the charges were dropped without explanation. And when her mother tried to reach out, tried to press the issue and figure out why were the charges so dropped suddenly without any sort of explanation, she was fired from her job. And that's the reason that they had to move to another state. My first thought on the documentary was, I'm glad that this is publicized. I'm glad that this is something that, you know, filmmakers got a hold of this story and they decided to share this story with the world because this is something that not only has happened to Daisy and Audrey, this is something that has happened to and is still happening to many young girls and young boys all around the country. And we've seen how their assailants are able to get away with it. And, and we were able to see how law enforcement res responds sometimes. Like we're able to see how cruel it can be being a teenager growing up in high school, the names that they were called, the way that they were bullied, you know, how they felt ashamed. Like Audrey, a few days after everything, it was only a few days where she, she dealt with, you know, all the name calling, all of the attacking on social media, the cyber bullying and all that stuff to where she just felt like she couldn't do it anymore. She asked her mom to pick her up from school and she was in her room for most of the day. And when her mom found her, you know, she was gone. It was too late. And... Daisy, of course, like she went on, she was able to advocate for other young women going through this through similar situation. She took part in movement campaigns just to kind of ensure that these sort of things don't happen to other young women. But unfortunately, you know, it just began to take a toll on her to where she just felt like she just didn't want to be here anymore. And she ended her life. I feel like Daisy Coleman was definitely as real resilient as she felt she could be. You know, she was a victim turned survivor. Um, she helped co-founded a nonprofit organization to do prevention programming, sort of similar things to what it is that I do as a violence prevention specialist. Founded the nonprofit organization called Safe Bay, and the purpose for Safe Bay was aimed as a prevention program to prevent sexual assaults from happening within schools. Um, obviously, we want to prevent sexual assault from happening outside of schools, especially in these times where we're living in. We are in the middle of a global pandemic. You know, a lot of places that are still required to quarantine people if they're not being locked away with abusers. You know, they're they're they still feel stuck, and I can imagine that that could have been part of the reason that led to her just feeling like she was trapped. Um, I won't pretend to know and understand exactly what it was that she was going through, but I just definitely want to be sympathetic. There are support systems, there are networks out here, there are organizations like the very one that Ms. Coleman co-founded, like the one that I'm currently working for, that are here to provide you with as much resources and as much tools as you need. And sometimes getting access to those resources are a bit hard, especially in the middle of a global pandemic, and I understand that. So my purpose is just to ensure that, you know, this isn't something that continues to happen. To me, I really just think that it's sad. I've always grown up with a pride in our country, in America, but this is not, I mean, the things that happen here, I know that there are worse things that happen in other countries, but 
it's just really sad to me that we can live in a world where, you know, people can do something like this to a young woman, to anyone, and there are no real consequences for it. Like, the fact that, you know, these guys were football players, like, those were the things that that the cops and a lot of the people in the towns were concerned about. Like, these are good kids. They get good grades, they're football players. You know, they come from a really great background and a really great family. And I just wonder, how long are we going to make those things top priority? How long are, are those gonna be the things that matter the most over someone's emotional well-being or in a tra traumatic event that literally changes someone's whole life? Like, how long is that going to be the case for us in America? When will it change? When will it stop? Is the question that I ask as a violence prevention specialist. And the best thing that I can do is continue to implement prevention programs and educate and just share resources that are out there so that if someone goes through something like this, then they know the, the that there are steps that they can take to recover, but most importantly, to prevent this from happening again. I just want to make it clear that sexual violence can have psychological, emotional, and even physical effects on the survival or victim, and this can last over a duration of their lifetime. All survivors are different. All victims are different. That's why it's important to classify some as victims and some as survivors because they identify in different ways, and it impacts them and affects them in different ways. The effects that sexual assault can have on a person, shame, guilt, and eventually go into other things more harmful like fear that your attacker, that it's going to happen again, sometimes just flashbacks, remembering what happened. In some ways, the, the trauma affects you in ways that you don't even realize. It, it comes out in other areas and aspects of your life, trust issues. There are so many different things that can affect a person they might experience depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, self-harm. They can contract a sexually transmitted infection from this to substance abuse or diso dissociation, like associating yourself away from it, kind of pretending that it never happened, being in denial. Panic attacks can be a result from sexual assault, eating disorders. Pregnancy can be a result if the guy didn't use protection. And the worst one of all is suicide which is the hardest to talk about, especially in reviewing this, given the light of the fact that Daisy Coleman committed suicide exactly a month ago from today, on August 4th, 2020. Her mom released a public statement stating that Daisy never really recovered from what it was that those boys did to her. She tried and it was obvious she was extremely resilient and it's just heartbreaking to, to see someone try and to rebuild the pieces of their lives, but they just seem to not be able to escape it. Well, if you or anyone that you know have experienced sexual assault recently, it doesn't even have to be recently, but you haven't been able to heal from it or get the help you need, please reach out to your local rape crisis center if there is one in your area, if there is a women's shelter in your area that you can reach out to, call a 1-800 number or a crisis hotline so that you can get the help and the support you need. Studies have shown that immediate help, immediate assistance, whether that is counseling, whether that is going through some type of group program where you have supporters of like-minded individuals who have been through similar things as you. Um, studies have shown that going through those sorts of things are very therapeutic and, and help in healing and saving lives. Thank you, thank you so much for tuning into this video. Remember that there will always be a friendly face for you somewhere, even if it doesn't seem like it when you look in your immediate circumstances, even when you are looking at your situation and you're thinking that no one could possibly be there to help me or no one could possibly care. I promise you that is not the truth. Someone is always there for you. Just as much as there are evil people out there in the world who do harmful things to people, there are as much good people who are trying to reverse that trauma and prevent that from happening. So reach out to us if you need someone like that in your circle. We will be there for you. I mean, so if you didn't know, now you have it. Just need some information and you don't feel like you know where to go. Check out Rare Company TV on YouTube. Definitely log into Hopeful Horizons website at www.hopefulhorizons.org and 
get that information that you need because it's out there. It's out there on the internet at your fingertips. You can find it. So if you need a friend, remember that you can call me, call on us at Hope Horizons anytime and we will be there for you. I hope you enjoyed this video on the review of Audrey and Daisy. Again, definitely a good watch, definitely a must see. Tune in for more videos because I will be back with you. Have a good one.